Well, hello and welcome to the CSF monthly podcast for February. This podcast aims, as it always does, to keep you up to date with the latest information and data in the field of rheumatology. Now, before we look at the papers this month, don't forget that if you want to find out about the recent publication of the oral surveillance data, we've released a special edition of our author interview podcast series featuring one of the paper's authors, Professor Roy Fleischmann. It's available now on the CSF website, and really it isn't to be missed. It's an important paper, gives us things to think about. Now, for the first uh, of this month's papers, we continue the theme of tofacitinib safety in rheumatoid and take a look at a paper by Kozro Kabaratal, who've conducted a large population-based observational study to further examine the risk of cardiovascular outcomes with tofacitinib in people with rheumatoid treated in routine clinical care settings. Uh, the second of today's paper reviews also uh, ha have an implication for tofacitinib in clinical practice. Uh, well, clinical trials have generally shown no significant differences in terms of efficacy and safety when switching tofacitinib dose up or down. These are per protocol switches and are not directly informative for clinical decision making in practice. Uh, clinicians, of course, have to make um, dose adjustments in clinical need, and that's quite different from the clinical trial setting. So to help provide some clarity on what physicians should expect in terms of efficacy and safety when adjusting dose based on clinical need, Muller and colleagues have carried out a post hoc analysis of the oral sequel study to assess the impact of switching versus staying in the same tofacitinib dose. Now, as always, if you want to look at detailed summary slides of the papers discussed today, go to cytokinesignaling.com. It's a great website. There's a ton of resource there, which I'm sure you'll find useful. Well, let me turn to the first paper. Tofacitinib and risk of cardiovascular outcomes results from the safety of tofacitinib in routine care patients with rheumatoid arthritis, the STAR-RA study. Well, of course, the background well known to you, rheumatoid is associated with systemic inflammation and that in turn promotes comorbidities, particularly cardiovascular disease. Uh, recently, the post-marketing findings from the oral surveillance trial raised concerns that tofacitinib is in comparison with TNF inhibitor, perhaps associated with an increase in the risk of cardiovascular disease in people with rheumatoid arthritis. Now, the aim of this study was to conduct a large population-based observational trial to further examine the risk of cardiovascular outcomes with tofacitinib in people with rheumatoid arthritis treated in routine clinical care settings. The key findings, well, the pooled weighted hazard ratio for cardiovascular outcomes when comparing tofacitinib with TNF inhibitor was 1.01. .01. The confidence intervals there are 0.83 to 1.23, with weighted rate difference corresponding to 0.02, with a confidence interval negative 0.19 to 0.23 cardiovascular events per 100 patient years. An increased risk of cardiovascular outcomes was observed among RWE patients with history of cardiovascular disease, the pooled weighted hazard ratio 1.27. Um, the confidence intervals here are 0.95 to 1.7, but not those without history of cardiovascular disease. So concluding in this multi-database population-based study, no evidence was found for an increased risk of cardiovascular outcomes with tofacitinib in comparison with TNF inhibitors in people with rheumatoid treated in the real world setting. In concordance with the results from oral surveillance, however, tofacitinib was associated with an increased risk of CV outcome, albeit statistically um, borderline, in patients with rheumatoid with cardiovascular risk factors. An elevated risk of cardiovascular outcomes therefore remains an issue, and I think we do have to continue to be very vigilant in this space. Now, the second paper, the effect of dose adjustments on the efficacy and safety of tofacitinib in people with rheumatoid arthritis, a post hoc analysis of an open label long term extension study. So, this is oral sequel. Well, it's a post hoc analysis of patients with rheumatoid arthritis who were required to switch from 5 to 10 milligrams BID or from 10 to 5 milligrams BID on entry to tofacitinib long-term extension studies generally showed no significant differences in terms of efficacy or safety between those who switched down, up, and, 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 and not at all. Per protocol switches are not directly informative for clinical decision-making in daily practice, where treating physicians 
typically adjust those in response to disease activity, specific patient characteristics and disease presentation in the context of other patient factors. And it remains unclear, therefore, as to what physicians should expect in terms of a loss or gain of efficacy when adjusting dose based on clinical need and whether dose switches are associated with particular adverse events. So this is a post-hoc analysis of the oral sequel study aimed to assess the impact of switching versus staying in the same dose on efficacy and safety in people with rheumatoid. Well, key results are as follows. A significantly greater reduction in DAS28 score from baseline was observed in the dose up group versus the stay on five group at months three, nine and 12. Rates of achieving MCID in DAS28 were significantly higher in the dose up group versus the stay on five group up to month nine. And DAS28 remission rates were significantly higher in the dose up group versus the stay on five group at month 12, with no significant difference seen in the stay on 10 or dose down groups. No significant differences in DAS28 LDA rates were observed between the groups. In the dose up group, a significant improvement in hack disability index scores from baseline versus the stay on five group was observed from month six onwards, with no significant difference seen on the stay on 10 or dose down groups. And importantly, safety data were similar overall across the four groups. So concluding here in patients with rheumatoid arthritis receiving open label tofacitinib, this analysis found that some patients benefited from increasing dose from 5 to 10 milligrams BID and reducing dose from 10 to 5 milligrams BID did not seem to affect efficacy and dose switching in either direction doesn't seem to affect safety. However, I would emphasize that we must use tofacitinib within label. So consider these um, uh, these as advisory and uh, informative data rather than telling us what we should be doing in clinical practice. We should always follow the label for sure. Now, if you want to uh, view the publications uploaded this month and to access other podcasts and resources, head over to cytokinesignaling.com. And as always, thank you for your attention. Please don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. Let us know what you think by leaving a review. And as always, as we navigate this pandemic, please do stay well, stay healthy. Thanks ever so much.